people come to Hyderabad and they visit the Char Minar, maybe walk near the Hussain Sagar Lake, have the famous biryani, or pick up some munchies at the Karachi Bakery. So I've been invited to a very special place. It is Mr. P. R. Mansingh's personal cricket museum. Yes, he's the same man who managed Couples Devils at the 1983 World Cup, and India went on to lift that cup, if you may remember. So, in this country, a cricket crazy nation, we do not have too many places that showcase our rich cricketing heritage. But here I am in a very special place. So let us have a tour and find out what's there for us to see. So sir, thank you very much for inviting us over and I'm just very excited to see all this. You know, when did you start collecting all this great stuff? Well, you see, it's not the question of when I picked up any of these particular items. My initial collection started with books. And uh, the first book that I got was uh, End of an Innings by Dennis Compton. We were on a uh, educational tour. I was in the engineering college at that time. And at Higginbotham's Bangalore. That's where I picked up that book. And since then, well, on my travels or visits, whatever, whatever items of cricket memorabilia, I just collect. And over the years, I've been able to develop my contacts where we sort of exchange. There are several people all over the world who collect uh, one or two particular items. Autograph sheets, autograph bats, but I collect anything and everything connected with cricket. Maybe you can say way back in 1956 that I picked up that book. We have these stairs and you come up the stairs, you know, it's like entering a temple of cricket and you appropriately have plays Sir Don Bradman and KS Ranjin Singhji right at the start. Yeah, you see, whenever we talk about cricket and world cricket, it's always Don Bradman. In spite of the fact that today uh, Sachin <clears throat> outscores anybody and everybody who has played cricket, but still, Bradman stands out. And then when we talk about Indian cricket, then it's only Rajit Singh Ji. It's rather unfortunate that he never played for India, but when he was at his best, India was not participating at international level. So probably that's one of the reasons why he just didn't play for India. Keith Miller also occupies a spot right there, one of the greatest all-rounders the game has ever seen. Yeah, of course. Most importantly, he is my favorite all-rounders among all those who have played the game. Is the fly, flamboyancy with which he would bat and bowl. I mean, if, even if you are bowling with a new ball, many a times during the course of the, in the middle of an over, second or third ball, he would just take two steps and then bowl with equal pace and uh, bounce. He was great. When we just look around, we see a lot of memories associated with you. You were a part as an administrator with a lot of these teams, be it Hyderabad or Hyderabad Blues, visiting teams as well. So, there are a lot of sentimental values attached with these photos, isn't it? Of course they do. And uh, I am very proud to have been associated with uh, the game, particularly anything which was connected with Hyderabad cricket. And uh, <clears throat> this gave me an opportunity of meeting and interacting with some of the great names of world cricket and uh, the other privilege that I would have whenever there was a visiting team that they would always respond to my invitation to come home, have a drink and then spend some time with me. If an Indian cricket fan is to be asked about you, then they'd say, oh yes, uh, you were the manager when we won the 83 World Cup and of course you'll have memories that will stay with you forever when compared to any other Indian. We weren't there. You were right there. So this, how special is this in your entire museum? Is it the one thing that has the most attachment to you personally? I mean, if you uh, ask me about items as such, hmm. then I'll only single out the medal which uh, the sponsors of the tournament, the Prudential Insurance gave me, hmm. which I'll show you inside. But anything here, connected with the 83 World Cup, are very fresh in my mind and very memorable. 
and precious as well. Four years later, you returned again for the 1987 World Cup, and we can see that you know there are a lot of memories associated with these games. For example, this was Chetan Sharma's hat trick, hat trick, and uh, this was border lifting the cup. And basically, India had done quite well in this World Cup, isn't it? Disappointing that uh, we lost to England, uh, a match which uh, we should have won quite easily. But as cricket is game of glorious uncertainties, we lost to England in the semi-finals. So we have now officially entered the temple, as I'd like to call <laughs> it, because. It's just marvelous, you know. We've got cassettes, we've got the Wisdom Cricket Monthly, the BCCI annuals, plus a lot of autograph bags, medals. No, most of them uh, are connected with the matches uh, where I was a manager or an observer on behalf of the BCCI, and uh, of course, others are part of my collections. What about these medals? You know, there are quite a few small medals, and this one, the MRF World Series. And they are all the lapel pins. And uh, some of them are the badges which are given to the officials during the match as an identity for their entry into the ground. But since they are very attractive, so I've collected them. Okay, as we move right here, uh, you know, there are a lot of cufflinks. And these were also presented to managers, were they? Uh, not really. Some of them are uh, presented during my travel and when Hyderabad Blues were playing against the local sides in various countries and a uh, few of them I bought them which are put up as uh, cricket memorabilia see it at the shop at Lord's Cricket Ground and other places. It's quite fascinating isn't it that there's so much culture associated with such things. Of course and they keep uh, I mean they sort of remind you of your visits and then the pleasant time that you would have spent with the local cricketers, the officials and others. Now here are scores of bats and they have a lot of autographs of players. There's India, Pakistan, New Zealand. These are visiting teams uh, who have come to Hyderabad, are they? Yeah, not only to Hyderabad, when they are visiting uh, India. And uh, some of the autographs I've taken on bats while I was witnessing some matches abroad. The point of collections are varied. They're not specifically only Hyderabad. Now, this autograph book okay. has the autographs of all the Indian test cricketers who were alive in 1980. All? All of them. If we can see, that's Chandu Sarwate's autograph, R. Sudhakar Rao. So, are they in order or they... No, 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 just uh, spread out. Okay, that's Shivla Yadav. That may have been fairly simple to get, wouldn't it? He just lives right here. No, you see, incidentally, I must say that this was taken during the Golden Jubilee Test match in Bombay. Oh. All, all these test cricketers were invited for the match. And I was their host on behalf of BCCI to look after the payments of their TAD, etc. And I took the liberty of making them sign my book first before they would sign the receipt and collect the money. Deepak Shodhan. 100 on debut, this Mohinder Amarnath, Shute Banerjee, you know, it's just rich cricketing history and there's Dinkar Balwan Deodhar also, but he never played for India, did he? He played unofficial test matches. Yes, but not an official. Not an official so that, That's quite interesting, you still managed to get him because he's one of the greats of the Indian cricket. I enjoyed his uh, advice company more when both of us were there on the BCCI coaching subcommittee. Sure, I mean it's going to take us the whole night if we are going to continue. Now, as I said, all the Indian living test cricketers in 1980. That's Mushtaq Ali, Madhav Mantri. So, you, have you tried to get autographs of subsequent cricketers in a book like, you know, whoever debuted after the 1980s, for example? Not really, no. Because I want this to stand out that in 1980, these were the Indian test cricketers who were alive and I had the honor of meeting them. That is the 67, 68 uh, Indian team store of Australia when Tiger was the captain, Gulam was the manager and they had met uh, Don at the Adelaide Oval. Uh, how did you manage to get Sir Don's autograph for this? 
Well, you must first ask me, how did I get that picture? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, since uh, Gulam was my mentor, I always considered him as my guru. And uh, he had this picture from Australia. And I literally pinched it out of him. This, these are lot more bats, you can see. And these yeah. are more organized tour-wise. For example, uh, there's this India tour of England. This one is the End Part series 2002. That's fairly new. You, can, you have the likes of Sachin, Tendulkar, Harbhajan Singh, even Parthip Patel who was 17 yeah. years old at that time. So there's a lot of contemporary stuff also, you will say. It's an assortment of both. And that was that bat was given to me by Ron Kanai. This was during uh, his... 60, 66 tour. And that bat, you'll see the drooping shoulders. At one time, it was felt that Base bowlers were taking the edge of the bat and getting out. Hmm. So the grey nickels made those drooping shoulders bats. There's a lot of history here dating back to the 80s, but there's also a very special space for Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar. So, occupies the space in every Indian's heart. Of the well, I, co I call this as Sachin's corner. He was the one to have inaugurated this library of mine. I mean, this is probably one of his rare pictures without a helmet. Yes. And he read what Gary Sobos had written and signed on his picture mm. and just reproduced this here. Isn't there a bit of, uh, you can say, the humility? You know, he sees a great cricketer, perhaps the greatest cricketer the world has seen. And then he wants to follow his footsteps. Yep. And basically, he had equaled the uh, number of the test centuries Gavaskar had scored. Of course. And those are his uh, 100 tests that played. Great innings played at the Brabourne Stadium, the cricket club of India. What's that about? All the gates were emerged out of? You see, when Raj Singh was the president of CCI, hmm. he would bring out some of these very uh, commemorative uh, plates. And there's also another very interesting photo here, Sachin at 60. Well, this came out, I think, in one of the magazines. And you have framed it. But we are quite sure that even if he turns 60, he is still going to have that childlike enthusiasm. <laughs> so I, I can't see anything change there. <laughs> now, in 2008, you celebrated the 25 uh, years of winning the 1983 World Cup. And the whole team came together and you had this bat to show. All members have signed it. Yes. So, you know, like, how was it getting back after all those years and reliving the memory of something that will stand out throughout your life? It does. And uh, the old spirit, as one would say, which was there in 83, and that was one of the main reasons for our winning the World Cup, still exists. And this time when we assemble, we assemble with our families. Even the families were very happy to be among them. And there's also a lot being said about this team being a very fun team gelling together. So I'm sure it would have been the same like you said. Yeah, it was. These are the ah. shapes of the various or various shapes of bats which had developed over the years. If you look at today's bats, they're nothing like these. And you can just imagine the level of difficulty these people must have had while playing with such bats. I wouldn't say difficult. I mean, they have changed over the years uh, as per the requirements or the needs of the hour. Like today, everybody wants a very heavy bat to hit sixes. With the big meat. Big meat. So that's why this thick and heavy. These are the bats which are pretty light. Here we have quite a few caps that you have collected. And you know, it's not easy collecting all these caps. These spread from so many years. For example, there it's, there's a Bangladesh cap, there's a Zimbabwe cap, India obviously. Then there's a Mohinud Dola cap. How do you manage to get all these? I mean, there's East Africa as well. Well, as I said, I have collected all these caps during my travels. And uh, probably... This one cap, you'll feel, is rather rare. This was the Packer Series cap. Oh. Worn by all the teams, was it? Oh, well, most of them. And I just, again, pinched it out of my friend Asif Iqbal, who also signed this. Oh yes, that's Asif Iqbal's signature. The super test. 
still well maintained. So. There are other super test caps as well. Uh, this one is there. That's this is also World Series. Yeah, lot of signatures. All the many many players have signed this. Uh, that's Imran Khan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is the medal that you were presented with after the Prudential World Cup. Yeah. In 1983. 83. And as you said, this is the most special. Yeah, this is the most special for me. And also you've kept other, you know, World Cup related memorabilia in this particular cabinet. Now this is of course your main one, but then also there's the... A replica of the Prudential Cup. With your name on it. Yeah, this was given to us in 2008 at Lord's. And every member has it. Every member has it with the name. And uh, there's also... This is what, which was given by the board, BCCI. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ones with the ball was given in Dubai. There's also a bit of uh, 2011 World Cup stuff. And uh, this was the replica mm -hmm. which was given at uh, Lata Mangeshkar's uh, concert. After the uh, 83 World Cup. Mm -hmm. 